let me just describe uh, the wooden dummy training before we go into it on an actual individual. Uh, many arts use this as a method of training and conditioning at the same time. Because you're hitting an object that's solid, you tend to desensitize what they would call the command points on the arm. At the same time, you're able to block and strike with it with uh, not really hurting yourself. You find it probably most popular in Wing Chun. Uh, the one I'm going to demonstrate today is from Bagua. Uh, the Bagua wooden dummy is slightly differently constructed. It's not as narrow. It's, it's actually a 90 degree uh, pattern. But the basic idea is for training purposes you need to hit something living. Okay? Uh, you find hitting your partner after a while, they find it really annoying, and they don't show up next week. The next choice you have is an animal. Okay, but you find that animals are actually smarter than people. So you smack them once, and they're gone. They don't come back at all. So your next choice is something that was once living, and that is the wood. Okay? Uh, you do see them made out of plastic, you do see them made out of acrylic, uh, but traditionally that was not considered good because it was not a living item that you were striking. So, the idea is not only conditioning, but there are certain set patterns that you would learn. We're going to demonstrate the first pattern, which is of course the easiest, and later on, as you're fighting an opponent, you start to move in the pattern that you trained on that wooden dummy with because your brain interprets it simply as pattern recognition. It sees a specific pattern and just flows right into it. And this is great because you don't have to think about it. And chances are you're going to do all right with it. It's very simple to learn for a beginner, very complicated in its depth of principle for advanced practitioners. The initial setup. Once again, slowly. Step in with my left, parry with my right, check with my left, check the other arm with my right. You'll notice I'm using the back of the forearms here. As you get advanced in this, this will become a chop down and a chop down, which has a totally different feeling, right? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. From here, I'm going to scoop up and either hit under the zygomatic arch, under the chin, or on the side of the jaw. And this can be done with one hand, two hands. It doesn't really matter. From that point, I'm going to throw a kick into the leg, hold on to the arm, drop, and not lean into it, but transfer my body weight into it. From there, sweep up, turn, and strike. Now, these motions look alien to Taekwondo, but that's not really true. They're actually in there, they just tend to be hidden because of the way we approach it. Normally, when we do a block, we approach it like so and we say this is the blocking arm. But what we've forgotten is this other arm. What happens in actuality is your parry, here's your check, and here's your other block. So when you see they're not just blocking one arm and then the other, they're actually blocking both arms or striking. So, going back to just the wooden dummy, approaching it this way, this would deflect this arm, this one would check and strike, and this one would go to here for two arms. But if we dropped and we just had one punch, what we get is parry, check, strike. And that would be your motion. Right in. So it's there. Also in Taiko, where we have this motion, it's taught as elbow strike and back fist and stuff like that. It's a very weak motion, but if you apply the same concept, he's grabbed my wrist, he's getting ready to punch, so I'm actually rotating my way 
out of his punch. This other hand becomes the checking hand. I trap and strike. Now this short little demonstration teaches a lot of principles. The first one is we have to be close. Normally because of the sport aspect, we're always out here trying to shoehorn these motions into something. The actual techniques exist here at this distance. So when this comes in, especially in Taekwondo when you see these two blocks, we have a tendency to think of them as this. This is very weak. It doesn't really work out. But if we stepped in and up, then the techniques become effective and our distance is established. Now, we've kicked low, we've shoulder struck, which is not something we practice all the time, but to teach this to beginners, we teach them to raise it up completely. However, the same technique could just be used as a middle block, and then followed up with a punch. One more time, it's here, I've deflected it, I come up with my middle block, turn, and strike. 